Welcome back to Hey Kentucky. Still joined by gubernatorial candidate and Kentucky Attorney General Andy Bashir. Andy, I want to talk to you a little bit about some of uh, the issues going on. You've criticized, I think, a lot some of the overstepping of authority that you say Governor Matt Bevin right. uh, has done during his time. Is that something that you think is a big reason why you got into this race? Well, I think that what that shows you is I'm the only candidate out there that's proven he can go up against Matt Bevin and win repeatedly. It's also shown you that you to be effective as a governor, you have to understand what the rules and the boundaries are, uh, what the Constitution allows and doesn't allow, and then be willing to put in the work within those boundaries to get something done. Uh, and I'm proud of my work as Attorney General where we've taken on big problems and shown that we can get results, like Kentucky's rape kit backlog. You know, when I became Attorney General, we had 3,100 untested kits. But as of today, three years later, every single one's been through the first round of testing. We provided the funding to make sure it never happened again. And we even opened up that cold case unit that uh, now has over three indictments. But there are some people who say, okay, look, I'm kind of tired of bickering. In Washington, we, we see I Donald understand. Trump and the Democrats bickering. And there's been a Bevin versus Bashir bickering going on even to when he ran with your dad and now this. So some people say, I'm ready to just move on from that. What's your response? Well, uh, Matt Bevin bickers with everyone. It's not just me. Uh, you've seen him attack uh, every candidate that gets into this race. You've seen him fight with preachers. You've seen him fight with educators. You've seen him fight with people uh, in his own party. You know, every attorney general has had disagreements with their governor. Actually, every attorney general has had to sue the administration. Uh, that they serve with. The only difference here is how Matt, Matt Bevin has reacted. But I tell you what, we do need a change in tone. You know, my commitment when becoming governor from day one uh, is to show the type of decency and ultimately embrace the type of transparency that Kentuckians so desperately need. Uh, what they'll see from me as an end uh, to this fighting is reaching out each and every day to build the relationships uh, to get things done. We've got to move past the partisanship because the challenges we face uh, with our education system, getting ahead of this drug epidemic, uh, providing more affordable health care, uh, and, and creating really good jobs where, you're, where your salary and your wages outstrip your bills, uh, none of those are partisan. And finding those solutions and moving forward is going to require working together. Some of your Democratic, now you have two Democratic uh, opponents as of right mm -hmm. now, Adam Edlin and Rocky Adkins. And Adam Edlin, when he entered the race, said it was time to move past family uh, <laughs> generational leaders, which was clearly a, a shot at you. How do you respond to that? People who say maybe you shouldn't just be a candidate because of, you know, you passed with your father. After three years of, of Matt Bevan, I'm not interested in responding to any shots or, or attacks. We ultimately need to move forward and look at our candidates' records of accomplishment and ultimately what their vision is. I think I've proven myself as Attorney General that I'm tough enough to, to take on uh, anybody who's violating the law, but more than that, that we can address tough issues and get real results. Uh, look at what we've done to address Kentucky's drug epidemic. Now, we lose 30 Kentuckians a week to a fatal overdose. Yet we have an administration right now that hides painted rocks around the Capitol and claims that's a solution. Uh, we launched Kentucky's opioid disposal program aimed at cleaning out every single medicine cabinet because pills still drive about 80% of addiction. I understand that, and that those are good things. But on some level for Democrats mm -hmm. watching this, they're having to decide. They don't like Matt Bevin, so they're having to decide, do I take right. Andy Bashir, Adam Eland, or Rocky Atkins? And on some level, there has to be, whether you want to take a shot or not, there has to be some indication of why they pick you. That's right. Why do they pick you over a person who's been in the legislature right. for many years and a person who is the state auditor? They, they pick me for three reasons. Number one, I'm the only candidate that's proven I can go up against Matt Bevin and win repeatedly. Uh, second, they pick me because I have a real record of getting results. In three years as Attorney General, our work against senior scams, returning over $2 million to our seniors, our work on the drug epidemic, I've become the most aggressive Attorney General in the country at taking on opioid manufacturers and distributors. Uh, our work at nearly tripling the number of child predators we remove from Kentucky's communities show that I can get things done. But it's also the vision. 
You know, I believe in, in an administration that works for all of our families, that tries to return state government to the people that it's supposed to serve, that's focused on those issues when you go home at the end of the week that you're worried about, addiction, uh, whether your kids are but getting you a good any education. Do policy differences from the others? I mean, I would say I could talk to Rocky Atkins and he would agree with all that. And I would talk yeah. to Adam Eadland and he would agree with all that. Do you have any policy differences that make you different than the other candidates? Well, I think there are a number uh, of different ways. I mean, you're going to see our plan on jobs, uh, embracing agriculture technology, uh, embracing robotics, creating the jobs of the future, trying to step ahead 20 or 30 years so that we are a center uh, for the types of jobs that are going to uh, run the economy in the next 100 years uh, is going to be a key part of, of our vision. Uh, but I think you can also see my strong support for expanded gaming. Uh, not only casino gaming, um, online poker when it becomes legal, uh, sports gaming, and dedicating 100% of that revenue uh, to our retirement systems. That is an area uh, where I'm out there pushing every day, and it's an area that could finally provide a real solution to what is a pressing problem. I'm for that. Marijuana. Are you for medical marijuana, and then would you be for recreational marijuana? Well, I think we first got to deal with medical marijuana, and I believe that Every state that has ultimately passed it has been a referendum state, and we're not. So I believe that we put it on the ballot as a constitutional amendment. So, but would you be for it? I, I would vote for it, yes. Okay, what about recreational? I think we've got to deal first with the, with the medicinal uh, issue. When you decided to run and mm -hmm. announce, Trey Watson, who's a spokesman for the Republican Party, issued a statement talking about the Tim Longmire mm -hmm. incident. He worked for you for three months, and he is now in federal prison, right. uh, and did donate money that ultimately was mm -hmm. found out was created fraudulently mm -hmm. to your campaign. They are trying to tie you to that. Do you, did you know that that happened, and oh, no. why shouldn't someone believe that you're responsible in some level if he worked for you? Well, it's, it's not just me. It's the U.S. attorney and the FBI that have stated repeatedly, and even in affidavits, that I wasn't involved. I had no knowledge. That's the most difficult betrayal I've ever dealt with in my life. But I think the way that we responded shows character. You know, unfortunately, things happen in state government. The question is, uh, are you going to respond with accountability and transparency? So I appointed a special prosecutor that prosecuted that individual and convicted him on state charges, meaning we'll hold you accountable if you live across the state or you work down the hall. But the other thing I embraced from the first moment is transparency. I answered every question, even on the day that I learned about it. We released every single email uh, that he'd written, and I pledged to release my tax returns every single year, which shows you that I don't uh, get any personal enrichment uh, from this job or state government. All I make is what I make in my job as attorney general and a few dividends, and that shows the people that I work solely for them. No matter what happens in the future, I will always respond with transparency and that same type of accountability, and that's something after Matt Bevan that people desperately need to see. Last question I always ask is, we would like to host the uh, Democratic primary. I have commitments from Rocky Atkins and Adam Eadland to be part of the primary. Will you be part of a Hey Kentucky primary I'd, debate? I'd be glad to.